Hello there. Welcome once again to another segment here of the Carpenter. Uh, we're on the book of Genesis, and we've been, uh, this is going to be video 21. And the book of Genesis actually started with video 13. And just to, uh, let's ask the Lord for a word of wisdom as we get cracking here in the, in the word again. And um, we've had to move the camera up closer because it's got a microphone built into it. And uh, I've been uh, having a couple of people say that, that they really have to turn up the volume when, uh, when the videos come on because they're having a hard time hearing. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, Paul said I need to speak louder. So I'm going to try to talk louder and hopefully uh, take care of the problem. But we, we, uh, we're probably going to need to get a microphone, one of those headsets. <coughs> I don't know if you can hear that. My neighbor across the street is doing weed eating. And you can hear the weed eater. I don't know if you all can hear it right now or not. But if you hear that whining, that's what it is. And, and Paul spends a lot of time trying to filter all these noises out. We're in a shop. This is a cabinet shop here. You can tell by looking that uh, we're in a shop. We're not in a, in a, in a studio that, that is uh, fixed for this. This is what we have to work with, and this is what we're working with. So we ask you just to uh, go through it with us, okay? Thank you now. Uh, <clears throat> once again, recapping a little bit on uh, Chapter 7 and Chapter 6. The Lord has, uh, Noah has built the ark. They're ready to get in. And the Lord tells him two of every animal and seven of couples of, of the clean animals and two of every flesh. And if you recall the word flesh in, in chapter six of verse 19, the word flesh is, uh, I want to read it. It says, and of every living thing of all flesh, Two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. Okay, and then it says on verse 20, it says, Of fowls after their kind and of cattle after their kind and of creepy every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come into the to keep them alive. But in, in verse 19 where it talks about flesh and the word flesh in, in the... In the Strong's Concordance, let me get my concordance here. If, if this is your first time around, if you're going to be a, a serious Bible study, studier, you need, you need to get uh, a Strong's Concordance. What it is, it, it's the Hebrew dictionary that gives you every single word that's in the Bible. Uh, it gives it to you in Hebrew and what it actually means. Because uh, if you've heard my segments before, we don't make it a secret that there are problems with the translations on the, the Bible. It was translated in 1611, the King James uh, Version. And as you go, you see sometimes the Hebrew, one Hebrew word might have seven or eight meanings in the English. So we have to go to that in the Hebrew to clarify things, okay? Um, and, and one of those is in, uh, where was it? Okay, it's going to be in, in, in Genesis chapter 4, and it's going to be uh, the last verse on there. Okay, in chapter 4, the last verse, which is verse 26, And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. And just to clarify that, where it says, began men to call upon the name of the Lord, the word call is actually profane. It, in, in the Hebrew it says, and then men began to profane the name of the Lord. So see, if you don't have the Hebrew dictionary to help you out here, you can miss it totally because you think, well, wow, people started calling on the name of the Lord back then. That's praise God. But no, that's not what it was. They started profaning the Lord back then. It's what it really means. So we have to be careful and we have to be able to check out what it says in the English. Okay. So 
uh, the word flesh, it's in the, in the Strong's Concordance, uh, Hebrews 13, 20. And one of, the, one of the meanings is mankind. So Noah was instructed. Now gather that we have had these fallen angels come and they, didn't, they were not born of women like God had ordained. They just came and laid with women and took them to wives and had kids. And the whole world became a mess. Okay, so uh, that's why the Lord had to do the, 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 the flood to get rid of all that was trying to obstruct his plan. If you were with me in the last segment, you know that God has a plan. And it doesn't matter what happens, God's plan is going to be fulfilled. I've read the end of the book, and God's plan is fulfilled. But in the process, Satan tries to change that plan, to stop it, to kill it, even from the book of Genesis, as, as we read with what happened with Eve and Satan. He tried to block the lineage because the lineage of Christ, Lord Jesus, would come or did come through Adam and Eve, and the bloodline had to be pure, Satan tried to stop it then. And he'll continually try to stop it, but he didn't. The Lord Jesus was born, and the Savior, not only the Savior of the world, he is the Savior of the universe. He is our Savior, period. Lord Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the true Messiah, because the false Messiah is gonna show up here pretty soon. And the whole world is going to flock after this guy thinking that he's the true Messiah. Well, it's another, another lesson for another time. But I just wanted to specify on the word flesh. It meant two of even the evil people that were on the earth. Okay, and we see that later on. The giants that were in the land, two of them, two of every race, so that God could preserve that. And we see it later on even with King David when he went up against Goliath. Uh, most people were normal, I'm 5'9", and most people are somewhere in that area, 5'9", 6 foot, 5'8". Uh, there's some that are real tall. I have a real good friend of mine, Mr. Opal Brand from McAllen, and he's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and he stands out. You can see him right off the bat because he's taller than most people. But for the most part, most people are more or less anywhere from 5'8 to 6 foot. But these giants, like Goliath, was probably eight, eight and a half, maybe nine feet tall. And that's where it comes from. Anyway, we'll get that. That's, I'm just filling you all in on everything. There's so much to the Word of God. And, and so much that, that we think that we know. And it's not until you actually get into it, you realize that you don't know really much. And, and we need to study the Word. God left us this, this beautiful book, the, the Bible, everything that's in here so that we could study and get to know the Lord our God, Lord Yeshua, God, Yahweh, the Father. I've stressed time and time again to spend time with God. You need to spend time with the Lord and let Him know that you love Him, that you trust in Him, and that you want to serve Him and please Him. Just let Him know that you love Him. You know, we talked about last segment about people Parents, kids, grandparents, if the only time your kid ever comes to you is when they need something, if the only time that you ever go to your parents is when you need something and you don't really know them, that, you know, <laughs> that's not much. And if you don't get to know God here in this age right now by spending time with Him, we have another age coming pretty soon. And, and if you don't know Him now, it's going to be real hard to get to know Him then. So spend time with the Lord. Time spent with God is precious, and, and, and it's never, how do you say it, time spent wrong. Anytime you spend time with the Lord, it's great. It, it edifies you, your soul, and you step, or you come a little closer to the Lord. My goal is to be intertwined with God. That's my goal. Okay, and, and you don't do that by sitting around all day and not doing nothing to, to try to get close to God. A good soldier, uh, and we're all soldiers for Christ, a good soldier exercises 
the, the, the way to fight a war. He didn't sit in the barracks all day long watching TV or, or reading funny books. He spent time preparing for the war. Put on the full armor of God is what the word tells us. And the full armor is to be equipped with his word, that it is in, impregnated in your mind, the seal of God, our Father, Yahweh. Have him impregnated in your mind where you can't be fooled. Okay, I've said a lot, and I haven't really gotten into the word yet. Where are we at, Paul? Time was? About ten and a half minutes. Ten and a half. So we got a little bit of time. We try to make these segments somewhere between 17, 18 minutes, maybe 20, because uh, we, we know that people are busy. So I'm going to get into, <clears throat> now that I've said what I've said about the flesh, about all the animals, I'm going to get into verse, uh, another thing that, that I want to specify right before I get into verse 8. Actually, I'm going to start with verse 8 right now, asking for wisdom from our Lord, okay? And it says, verse 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 1, it says, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters is waged. Uh, the word is waged means that they started declining. In other words, evaporation comes into place, and the water started evaporating. Now, if we go back to chapter 7. Uh, chapter 7, verse 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're in the shop, and it's hot in here. Uh, so if you hear me, uh, you know, maybe I need to clear my throat or whatever. It's because it's a little warm in here, but that's okay. I like it hot. I am a Hispanic from South Texas where the normal temperature is 100 degrees year-round, except for maybe two months out of the year, where it gets down to about 80. And when it gets down to about 80, I'm wearing a flannel shirt and flannel pajamas because I don't like it. I like it 100 plus. You can ask Paul. Paul doesn't like it like that. <laughs> but I do. I like it 110 in the shade with no wind blowing and a little fire going on at the same time. So, but that's okay. Anyway, go back to chapter 7, verse 4. The Lord has told... Noah to get into the ark and bring everything and everybody with him to hear what he'd said. Now in verse 4 it says, And yet, God speaking, for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Okay, so we know that the flood waters came and it rained upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Now here where we live in South Texas, uh, we had a storm that came by here yesterday, and, and, and it only rained really, really hard for maybe like 20 minutes. And everything got flooded out, man. My backyard is a, is a, is a lake. Uh, the streets, I mean, people, it was really, really bad. So that was just 20 minutes of torrents coming down. Can you imagine 40 days and 40 nights? So within 40 days and 40 nights is how long it took for the water to get as high as it did. So, uh, going to verse 11 of chapter 7, it says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open, and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the 600th year of Noah's life. So that means, like I said in the other one, Noah was 500 when he started. Took him 100 years to build the ark. The flood is here. Everybody's in the ark, and it's raining. Okay, 40 days and 40 nights. I don't know exactly at what day the ark started floating. And I'm sure that when people saw that the water was up two feet, three feet, they all started banging on, on the ark trying to get in. But God had shut them in, and God didn't open the door for anybody. Okay, so God's plan is in, in effect here. Okay, this is just part of God's plan. So we go on to, now we're going into chapter 8, where it says, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters is waged. Now, uh, going back on, on verse 24 of chapter 7, it says, And the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. So for five months, the waters are on the earth. Now, uh, verse 2, chapter 8, The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. 
and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated or they, they started receding. The word abated means to, they started receding. Uh, and the ark rested in the seventh month of the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat in Turkey. Uh, I, I bought, uh, let me see here, give me a sec. I, I bought this, this book because uh, if you're going to be a Bible, if you're going to study the Bible, you need all these tools to do it efficiently. And these are maps of what the world was like in those days and what it's like today. And it, this, is, this is really a neat little, little tool here. Uh, like, I'm going to see if I can pull this off. Okay, we have, let me see, yeah. We have uh, a map here, and you can bring the, uh, this is modern day, and then you bring this in, and it gives you everything the way it was back then in the days of the Bible. And, and it's got a bunch of pages like this, uh, everything. So, the Mount, Mount Ararat, here's this turkey way here at the top, and this is Mount Ararat. Jerusalem is down here. So we don't know. I've, I've searched and searched and, and tried to discover. Nobody knows exactly where uh, Noah was and where he built the ark. Okay, we have tried to figure that out, but can't. So this whole area here, it goes down to Sheba Yemen, uh, the, the modern day. This was the flood zone where it, where it flooded really bad. Of course, the whole world flooded. Uh, and some people say that it was just that area that flooded. Some say the whole world flooded. Uh, we really don't know. But we do know that the flood came. And they were in the, uh, in the ark for 150 days before it started uh, receding. The water started receding. And it's been five months. So the ark, okay, um, going to verse 4 of chapter 8, it says, And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountain of Ararat. It started on the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month. So from 2 to 7, from 2 to 7 is 5, right? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 5 months is when they were on the ark and the waters, they were in the waters. And on the, on the, on the seventh month, the ark landed on the Mount of Ararat. Now I, I, I checked out Ararat and, and it says it was approximately 17,000 feet above sea level. So a, a mile is 5,280 feet. So Three miles would be 15,600 and some odd feet. This was 17,000, so it was higher than three miles. Uh, where I live, right to the north, is what we call the three-mile line. And, and you can travel from the one-mile line to the three-mile line, and that's a long distance to travel. Okay, so that's how high the waters were plus another 2,000 feet. So it got deep, okay? And, and there have been uh, people that have gone to Turkey to try to find Noah's Ark, and, and there have been a couple that, that it appears that they have, and it's way up in the mountains. So we know that there was a flood. Noah was in the, in the, in the Ark that God told him to, uh, to, to build. It's been five months, and they're out at sea. They have plenty of food, plenty of shelter. The whole thing was covered with the roof, so if it was to keep on raining, it wouldn't get any water inside the ark. And if the sun was to beat down heavily, it wouldn't beat down on anybody because it had a complete roof that covered it according to what the floor plan or the blueprint says for it here. So um, we're going to stop here with verse 4 of chapter 8 because this really gets interesting here. And Paul is just letting me know that we're out of time. So I'm going to leave you with that right now. Once again, spend time with the Lord, okay? Spend time with the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Talk to Him. Talk to Him like, like, 
like your father. Uh, let him know where you're at. Pour your heart out to him. Let him help you on your journey. We're all on a journey, and each one of us is, is, has our own individual journey, just like Noah did. The flood of these end times are the flood of lies that are coming from everybody in the world, including our nation. We'll get into that as we go on. Anyway, I'll catch you all the next time. Thank you for watching. Lord bless. Love you all. Bye.